Close, man. Welcome, everybody, to Cornubia Park Sports Complex <laughs> as Nothing But Net Media presents another QBL Game of the Week alongside the Australian Sports Network, Stream Team Australia, of course, Basketball Queensland, and our major sponsor, the Illum Group. I got a couple guys with me tonight. I've got Dave Derwin and I've got Logan Thunder women's head coach Brayton Hesselhurst with us for this exciting matchup between the Ipswich Force and the Logan Thunder. Guys, we saw a great women's game, and Brayton, it was a tough loss for you. The men's game hopefully will be a little bit better for Logan, but it should be a great matchup. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the Logan team, obviously, coming off last season, have had a pretty good roster together for this year. A couple of new, new imports uh, in Brian Coleman. They've struggled early on, but last week uh, against Spartans and Gold Coast, I thought they got it together a little bit, um, especially in that second half against Gold Coast, pushing them to overtime. So um, I'm sure tonight they'll be, be a lot better than they have previously in the season. And Ipswich, Dave, uh, it's a pretty familiar group that we see from Ipswich, led by Kyle Harvey. Harvey, one of the most talented, well-rounded scorers, players in this competition. Any team that features Kyle Harvey is going to be dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we, we know those... Uh, those local characters, you know, led by Jason Ralph. You've got the import, Spearsy, from, I say, the North Queensland import, that is. But uh, a lot of these guys have been playing together for a while. And then uh, great to see Marty Lay come back for, for a good bounce-back year. You know, I think he was, you know, he'll admit, not one of his best last season, and I think he's been really terrific. I think the most important thing is the, this is the first time Ipswich has had their full roster uh, this year. So, uh, you know, I think it'll be really exciting to see what they can produce. It's going to be an exciting game, fellas. Just what are you expecting to see out of, out of both teams, Braden? Uh, well, uh, Logan, I think the way they've tried to play over the last couple of weeks, Luke spoke about trying to play at a faster pace and, and try and, you know, try and fit, fit in Brian Coleman a bit more. He's a bit different import compared to having Obi last, last year. Brian needs the ball in his hands a bit more, so they'll play a lot, you know, a lot faster and try and play out of more sort of high on balls and that rather than throwing it into Mitch. So I expect them to play a pretty fast pace, and I'm pretty sure Ipswich do the same. Well, they did last year, so I expect the same from them. Dave, you expecting an up-and-down game? you think it's going to be a high-scoring affair? Yeah, I think so, and I think we've, we've made the, um, you know, over, over the last couple of years watching some Ipswich games, Johnny, I think obviously Jason's a terrific point guard. When I think that they're most dangerous is when he, he lets go of the pill a little bit and, he, and they move the ball. And then they can get him off second and third rotations or catches. And then he's, you know, super talented and, 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 can really, and really tough to stay in front of. So I think for me, Ipswich looked its best when they mix it up a little bit and, and get the ball moving and get player movement and ball movement as well. So instead of being a little ball dominant, if that makes sense, because, you know, they've got a lot of decent swing, swing players um, that they can go to. So, uh, and uh, we should also congratulate Jason Ralph on getting married last weekend to Georgia Williams, the uh, other guard for the Ipswich Force women's team. Congratulations, Ralphie, and wish you guys nothing but the best, uh, especially after the wedding. The tip-off is won by Logan. They have the first possession, and Young, bank shot missed. Leahy grabs a strong defensive rebound. Yeah, really, really happy to see Leahy uh, back. Foul off the ball. It's going to be Rayshon Simmons trying to deny Jason Ralph the ball. Want to make sure everyone knows also, if you are watching the game on the YouTube channel, let us know in the comments where you're watching from so we can get you a shout out. Yeah, interesting to see if they stay in that one-on-one -on -one matchup um, with uh, Mitch Young on plane. There's Coleman with it, working on Leahy, kicks it out. They work it around the perimeter. Mick Cedar has it. Now Amar, wing three up. And down. Tommy Amar with the first bucket of the night. Logan up three. Yeah. Tommy Amar has been really good. We obviously had the game a couple weeks ago against North Goldie, and he was terrific. He did a great job of hitting, obviously, the open shots, which is what he does, but he did a great job on the glass as well. Good pump fake there by Poulain, and he gets a foul called on Mitch Young. It's the second uh, team foul on Logan. Leahy takes the inbounds, working around Harvey now at the free throw line. Jump shot is good. 
the old uh, smoke here, Braden takes a little while to it go. does, doesn't it? It's like go. a T20 Big Bash game. I think we did that at Southwest the other night and they had to put the fans on for a little bit <laughs> to get rid of the smoke. It's just, there's a bit of a haze. So it's not, it's not the camera. I hope not. I hope my camera's not on fire. Cedar uses the jab step, jump shots, wet. Kyle Harvey from the wing, he drains another one. Quick response from Ipswich. You see the pace is frenetic to start already. A lot of contact, there's a foul. They're gonna count the bucket as well. That's a really strong bucket from Brian Coleman. Yeah, and he, he struggled early in the season as well, trying to fit into the team and everything. But if you watch last week, both games against Spartans and Gold Coast, they did a really good job of hitting him off reversals, and he's, you know, six, 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 seven, and really agile. So um, watch out for that matchup because he could go for 25 to 30 like he did against Gold Coast last week. Lefty. Hey, yeah. Ben. Yep. Throws down some good hammers too, David. I hope we see a few of those tonight, Brandon. 8-5 the lead here for Logan. Quick pass, Harvey's open in the corner. He's hot! He's hot! It's 8 all. I love the, uh, the, evolution, the evolution of Pelaine from uh, bench guy to starting five man, second in the league, I think, in offensive rebounds. And now he's leading the break, hitting Harvey in trance. Spears, great hesitation uh -oh. dribble. Layup oh. is missed. Spearsy. Finish that. Simmons Spe wants to clear out. Oh, I want to see Spears he hammer that. He, you he, better he, let him know. He better let him know, Dave. I thought he had a really nice line drive. Good ball movement. Cedar has it with five on the shot clock. Comes off a young screen, loses it. Harvey recovers. Good defensive stand for the force. Ah, oh, Poulain can't handle the pass. Kind of started to make his move before he caught it. I think one of the big keys tonight, Johnny, is the way Logan come out and play defense because they've struggled, you know, in the start of the season playing D. And if they come out, you know, and play a good, you know, with good intensity and everything, they've given up a couple of physical fouls and that. But I think Luke will be looking for a good defensive game because they haven't played that way at all this season yet. Coleman's three rolls out. And again, it's a fast-paced game. I think both these teams want to play fast. Poulain's pass tipped. Coleman comes up with the steal. Goes behind his back, nearly travels. There they get him for the travel. Well, back-to-back -back turnovers. I did give a bit of love to Poulain, bringing the ball down. Now you got to look after the ball, big fella. I mean, you better let him know you're, you're giving him love. Well, he, he's got to hey. just gotta two, keep it up. Two careless turnovers. Just being indecisive, right? If, if either the back door to lay is on or it's not on, give it or don't give it. But don't think twice about it. Harvey gets inside, layup is good. Kyle Harvey is a bucket, a walking bucket. Yeah, he 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 is one of the most efficient, no nonsense scorers I've seen in this league. You know he's going to be aggressive too, and there's not much you can do about it. Good hands there from Ralph. He gets the steal. He's streaking towards the basket. Layup is up and good from Jason Ralph. Ipswich pulls ahead by four. Got to let you know, referees tonight, crew chief Jason Haig. The umpires are Tom Paisley and Jake Porter. Cedars wing three is up. That's way too strong. Poulain tips it. Spears recovers and then travels. And I think that's where Logan get caught in a bit of a trap too, Johnny. Like, kind of like we did in the women's game, really. Like, slow it down, it's not really at pace and just settling for like a one pass contested three. You know, and when Ipswich like this going down and getting easy buckets, it's probably not what they need. They probably need to try and get through something and play through Mitch Young or something like that rather than just shooting those. Simmons on the wing now. Here comes the touch to Mitch Young. Working against Spears, goes to the left hand hook shot. It's good. You got to get him a touch every time you're down court, I think. Especially with this lineup, when they don't have Poulain on there, they got no one that can guard him, and then they get move, movement off in the shooters they have as well. Yeah, it'd be, it'll be interesting, uh, Braden, to see what they, what they do here. If they if they maybe zone up a little bit, or they, they're they happy with Quan, 
Kwon, um, Kwon guarding him one-on-one -on -one, or if they're going to put Harvey on him. Well, I know from playing Ipswich last year when we had Delvon Johnson at the Phoenix, they did a really good job when you pass in of just everyone crowding him. So I don't think they'll necessarily go to a zone or try and switch matchups. They'll stay with what they do, I think, and live with those guys hitting contested jumpers probably. I'm excited to see uh, what Fergus, uh, Ferguson can bring to the table for the fourth. Good hit there from Quan. The different look. He's got the mo rocking the mode so far, James Quan. Here's Young getting to the rim, putting it down with one hand. I love that aggressive take from Mitch Young. Gets the crowd into it as well. When Ferguson came on, I thought it was Fulane again. <laughs> They're very similar. They definitely yeah. look alike. Harvey likes the matchup with Cedar. Jab, step, Ooh, one got foot him. flutters good. Got him. Har Harvey at 12 of 16 points for Ipswich. The Cedar gets inside. The finger roll is no good. Follow is for Mitch Mick Cedar. It's hard to even hear yourself in here with the music, gents. I can't imagine how these guys can hear each other on the court. What's it like, Braden, <laughs> on the sidelines as a coach? It's pretty hard, even with someone that's got a loud voice like me. I'm pretty sure you would have heard me sometimes yelling at my players about ten times, but... We did hear you yelling at the referees a bit, too. Oh, oh yeah, the one where I asked <laughs> who got the foul. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Brad got the same one, so I was happy after that. Yeah. Well, and then, he, and, then, and then another one. <laughs> yeah. Few changes for Logan. Sean Carroll checks in, Ryan Jeffries as well, and there's a bit of a half-court trap. Harvey has it, goes inside for Leahy, skips it to Ralph. Good ball reversal, here's Ferguson, three-pointers off. Leahy, offensive rebound, short jumper is no good. Tipped around, Coleman comes down with it. Simmons picks up his dribble, good pass. Carroll in the corner, three is wet. Short Carroll. Logan takes a one-point lead. Well, good old faithful. Uh, he, he struggled the last time we saw him, Johnny, down in the Goldie. But uh, he's certainly a handy contributor for the Thunder. Him and Tommy Amar love a, love a nice little baseline tray. You guys are unlucky that you missed the uh, Rockhampton game where Shawnee hit, I think it was 11. 11 out of 15 or something. Yeah, insane. crazy. Had like yeah, eight, eight in the third or something yeah. like that. Foul was called on Ryan Jeffries. It's the fourth team foul. <coughs> Ralph Defense. out to Quan on the wing. He'll fire the three. That's good. Quan. Quan has come out. Come out balling. He's been active on the glass. Young, a challenge at the rim. He's fouled. It's a quick hitter there. Well, that's the, that's the tempo that we talked about it. Um, around Coach Can really wanting to get it up, and you know he wants to be in that hundred plus uh, points a game, which is all well and good as long as they look after the pill and, and make those you know decent shots and those extra kicks instead of just settling for the one pass tray. Braden, you work pretty closely with Luke down here, don't you? Yeah, he's been really good. Like he. Like I said, uh, we had one of the meetings when I was applying for the job and Josh said, how do you work well together? And we worked well together last year when we were coaching against each other. So uh, he's really good, obviously knows his stuff and uh, works really well having a good relationship with both coaches. You can bounce ideas off each other and everything's been really helpful for, I think, both coaches so far. I know Luke would not be happy with the way that the season has started for the Thunder. No, but again, like, like I said, it's, it's completely different. Like, you've got someone like Obi Shea, who was just a player that you didn't need to draw plays for, you know, just did all the hard things, played defense, was a hard cutter, offensive rebounds, all that sort of stuff. And Brian's a bit of a different player. Brian's a bit more of an off offensive talent. So I think it's just taking time to fit those guys in. But, you know, like Luke keeps saying, you're not trying to win a championship in June. As long as you can get there, as we saw with Cairns last year, they'll continue to fit people in. They've got enough veterans, and once they... Once they get that sorted, they'll be fine. Technical foul called against James Kwan. He got called for the personal, pushing from behind, and then he picks up the technical from referee Jason Haig. I 
I really like this lineup. I think I spoke last week about it as well, is when Carol and Ray are on the court together. Because they can play, you know, both can play the point. Sean can start it, as we've seen, like, he played with that Knox Siebel team. He was the point guard for that team, which is one of the best Siebel teams of all time. He's really smart and can get Ray coming off sort of second side stuff, as you always talk about, DD. So. Yeah. I like, um, and equally, too, the addition of Jeffries has been good, too. Like, he was really good as a nice punch off the bench. When they kind of struggled a little bit in patches in that North Gold Coast team's game. So, uh, you know, Jeffries was really provided them a nice punch. You know, I think that's the benefit this team this year compared to last year. Oh, reverse layup um, from Leahy is missed. I, I agree, I agree, Brandon. I think that they lacked a, another decent bench contributor um, from being a real title contender for me last year. You know, and even even this year, you know, he's not getting much court time, but Gideon can obviously play yeah. a role, and, and Zach Young, who's coming on now, could play a role as well. So they got a bit more depth than last year, and I think that will really help when they get their stuff together going down further in the season. It's a three-point game here. Logan is up. Harvey gets it over to Ferguson. Spins on Coleman. Gets it out. Leahy three off the back of the rim. Simmons has it. Kicks it ahead for Carroll. Back out to Simmons. Great ball reversal. Jeffries three is wet. Ryan Jeffries increased the lead to five. And Coach Riches is going to take a timeout, so we're going to take one as well. Got about a minute 40 left in this one. It's a six-point lead, 25-19. Logan up on Ipswich in your QBL Game of the Week, presented to you by Nothing But Net Media. Back with you at Cornubia Sparks Sports Park Complex. I got that backwards five times over. Cornubia Park Sports Complex. There we go. John Guarno with Dave Derwin and Logan Thunder, women's head coach Brayden Hesselhurst. 25-19 lead here for Logan. Really good pace, I think, for both teams. This is exactly where both teams like to be at. Yeah, and I think, like I said earlier, Logan was settling earlier, but now they're playing off pace and... Uh, a lot of passes, getting to the paint first and hitting shooters, and I think that's the way Luke's want, Luke wants to play, and they've tightened up a bit on the defensive end as well. Harvey with the follow oh, off the Poulain miss. Ipswich likes to play up and down too, but it's really Kyle Harvey, and that's pretty much been it so far for <laughs> Ipswich, Dave. Yeah, pretty much 14 points for Harvey. And that's pretty much it. Carroll wing three. In and out, Young offensive rebound, goes up with the left hand and gets it to roll home. See Zach Young on the court for the first time for Logan tonight. Harvey goes inside, that's Ferguson, backing down against Zach Young. Turn around, jump shot, banks it Woo. home. I know you love that one, D-Love. I do like it. Might have to start calling uh, Jaden Ferguson, maybe <laughs> Jaden Duncan. Sean Simmons open for three. That's good. And it's been a bit of a knock on, Fer on Simmons. His jump shot isn't the greatest, but they give it to him. He takes it. He's got to take him, and that time he made it. Yeah, for sure. And I think, like I said, Logan a better when he, he's obviously leads the league in assists both years. But I think they play better when he's a bit more aggressive because it opens it up for everyone. So if he can knock that down and get to the rack a little bit more, I think it opens up for Logan. Ralph gets inside, a lot of contact, dumps it off. Harvey challenge at the rim, finishes, plus the foul. That's a tough bucket there from Kyle Harvey. Yeah, a great take from Ralph. And an even better finish from Harvey, who has, who has 16 of their 25. I mean, he might be heading towards 50, boys. Might be. Well, he's, aver he's averaging just over 30 a game. 
You can pair him to when he first came in the league as well. He's so much oh, better. Oh, nice tip. Blaine. Nice Blaine. tip. Nice little four-point play for the force. Shot from Jeffries to beat the buzzers off. And that's going to end the quarter. Heading into the quarter time at break, it's a three-point lead for Logan over Ipswich, 30 to 27. Dave, quick thoughts on that first quarter of action. Yeah, nice little arm wrestle in that first in the first quarter there. Um, you know, Logan started to get to the pace that they were after. You know, we, again, they want a lot high possession game, but uh, again, force they're okay. I think uh, they just weathered the storm a little bit. They don't. I think I don't think they want to get caught up in that track meet either. I think they need to take the life out of the ball a little bit and just be a bit more patient. All right, well, it's the end of the first. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back with some statistics in the second quarter of action here as Logan is up on three, 30-27 over Ipswich in your QBO Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media. Back with you here at Cornubia Park Sports Complex. Getting set for the second quarter of action. It's a three-point lead for Logan, 30-27, up on the Ipswich Force. Dave, taking a look at the stats, what's the box score telling you? Oh, for the Force, obviously Harvey's been killing at 16 early, uh, early first quarter points, which is on track for his standard 30 a game. But I think the key for Ipswich, if they want to get if they want to have a good chance of the win, is they got to in involve some other people and get some production from a few more people not called Harvey. Uh, we got to talk to Coach Riches. He cannot play Ferguson and Poulain for us at the same time. Can you put the word in, please? They, it's just they look so much alike. <laughs> I think that was I think that was Ferguson on that lane. Definitely Ferguson. Jaden Ferguson cuts the deficit to one for Ipswich. Jeffries fires a three in and out. Here comes Ralph. Pass inside, tipped and stolen by Tommy Amar. Gideon Machendo out there for Logan as well with Cedar, Amar, Jeffries, and Zach Young. That's a turnover. A little sloppy on both ends for both teams right now. Just got to get into there. Poor stuff. That's one of the things when you want to try with such pace. Equally, you can, you can get out of your stuff pretty quick. Ralph guarded by Machando. Gets inside the paint. Left-handed layup is good. Nice take there from Jason Ralph. Ipswich takes a one-point lead. Cedar dumps it in for Zach Young. He recovers. Now back out to Mick Cedar. Machando from three. It's up off the side of the rim. Spears with the rebound. Harvey working against Jeffries. Picks up his dribble. Gets it back out to Ralph. Ralph again gets inside. Picks up his dribble. He's in a bit of trouble using the step. He gets called for five seconds. Good defense there from Logan. I, I don't, I don't know that I've seen a five-second call too many times. And I think that one was pretty quick, right? For a five-second wow. call, you got to, you got to hold it on for like wow. 15 seconds it's to get not, that these days. It's not under 12s. I mean, I, you know, good defense. I guess do you reward that. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, you got to call it if yeah. it's there. Cedar's jumper is well off. Coleman somehow comes up with it for Logan. Young will fire along too, hits the back of the rim. 
Ferguson wow. grabs it. Just uh, pretty trigger happy right now. The start of the second quarter from both teams. Ferguson out to Spears. Ball movement nice from Ipswich. Ralph stops and pops and rattles it home. Ipswich on the ascendancy. They're up three. Yeah, a great little penetration from Ralph and the pull-up jump shot. Again, most, most times defensively, you think he, he's turning the corner. But he, uh, as you say, Johnny stops and pops. Young offensive rebound. He's fouled on his way back up. They got to do a better job. Got to do a better job of putting a body on him. A lot of jump shots coming from the Thunder so far in the second quarter. As I spoke about before, Johnny, I think, you know, it's okay to be trigger happy, but you've got to be sort of moving at some sort of pace and getting in the paint and that sort of stuff. And that's what Luke's spoken about, so I'm sure he won't be happy with that. But hopefully now with, with Ray and Mitch back in, they can sort of play through someone and get a bit better ball moving, and get some better shots. Good pass. Young flips it up. It's no good. Nice rebound there from Poulain. Spears goes inside, Poulain on the baseline. Finds a cutting Ferguson. Elbow jumper is too strong. Chased down by Coleman. They, they play a lot through Poulain. Does that surprise you, Dave? Yeah, yeah it, is, it is a little bit. I'm not saying that uh, it, in a negative way. I, I just think it's just been a bit a little isolated and then everyone's not really involved as opposed to moving the ball a little hard, more on the weak side. And I think if you're Logan, you kind of got to play him one-on-one, -on -one, right, and stay attached to all the cutters because yeah, he's yeah. more looking to pass than create for himself. And I'm pretty Poul sure a person like Mitch Young can guard him one-on-one -on -one as well. At that time, Poulain uh, put the ball on the deck, got to the rim and was fouled. So he's going to get a couple of shots here. Foul was called on Tommy Amar. Second team foul on Logan. You know, I think they did it once in the first quarter and, and Harvey got to the rim and then before Ferguson caught it at the foul line wide open. I think you just got to stay attached to cutters and make him go one-on-one. -on -one. He's shown an improved jump shot that has Poulain a lot. He's pretty money on that baseline jumper. I'm surprised he hasn't let a few fly just to kind of open things up a bit well, as well. I agree because it, like, I think most of us know he's not probably going to shoot it too many times, right? But um, um, they're obviously looking for uh, Ferguson coming off that a little bit. Great transition bucket there from Simmons. Going with the left. And I think, he, like, like D.D. said in the first quarter, he's also a bit vulnerable at times as well. So I think Mitch can probably do a better job of getting up and in and pressure it too rather than just sitting off as well. Well, back-to-back -back turnovers for the fourth. Simmons off to the races. You better find him in the corner. Mars too strong on the three-point attempt. It was wide open. He wanted that one bad. The scoring output has certainly slowed down a bit here in the second quarter for both teams. It's 34-33, Logan up one. Spears from the wing, misses the three, Simmons recovers. Wow, it is cold here in this second quarter. <laughs> it's a 6-4 quarter. Logan outscoring Ipswich by two in the quarter as Coleman drains the three. And that's one person probably for Ipswich. You don't want to sort of give him space like that, let him get going, because he's so athletic. Once he starts making shots like that, you're closing out a bit harder, and he can get to the rim and finish with the best of them as well. Leahy, elbow jumper, too strong. There's Coleman with the rebound. Well, uh, pr pr prior to that, prior to that, we had a five of 17 quarter. <laughs> Leahy gets called yes, for the foul there. from behind. Com combined, so it was a little frosty. He <laughs> to start the second. Quan and Harvey going to check in for Ferguson and Poulain. I was just going to ask when you thought uh, Harvey was going to get back in. Off. <laughs> Surely we're not the first people to say that. I'm, I'm, we ha there's no way that no one else has picked that one up. Have to check, uh, check and make sure that they're okay with us referring to them as, <laughs> as the twins. I'll solve, I'll solve it for now. Nah, it's all good. It's all in good fun. Cedars three is off. Leahy rebound. 37-33. Logan up four. Harvey leaves his feet. Finds Spears opposite wing. 
That three is off as well. Amar, defensive rebound. Good looks for the force. They're moving the ball. Again, they're, you know, they're, they're missing shots, but they are good shots. The Coleman again. <coughs> Ralph well, did lose it. Simmons kicks ahead. Tommy Amar gets up and lays it in. Coach Riches is going to take a timeout. Guys, let's keep it here. He would have dunked that when he played Siebel. Johnny. Uh, well, I mean, you we got to talk to Tommy about this because we need some dunks. We had one from Young. Tommy had a perfect opportunity for us. I mean, you guys got his ear. Get into him. I'll talk to him. <laughs> Pretty good time out there, though, by Coach Riches. His team's only down six, but they really have looked disjointed really so far throughout the whole quarter. Yeah, they have. And, and as you say, it, it, they're only um, they're down, plus, uh, down one this quarter, um, but they haven't really... Well, they just have they just got to balance it up. Like we talked a little bit about in that women's game, where when the shot's not falling, you've got to do something different. You just can't keep loading up and everyone think we're the Golden State Warriors. So either inside, whether that's getting Harvey or, or Marty Lay, you know, opportunities on the block, or equally get Ralph and the drivers to try and create and get to the foul line. Well, so, that's, what I, that's where I was going to go with that, because when Ralph has come off some screens and gotten feet in the paint, he's scored or they've gotten good looks. Yeah. But we've only seen, you know, probably a handful of that throughout the whole first half. Yeah, and the slowness of the, the things that Ipswich are doing has probably allowed Logan to dig in a little bit more off Harvey too and just recover and let other people shoot contested jumpers. I think Logan in the last couple of minutes is doing a better job on the role players too and realising that Marty and those guys aren't shooters and digging in a little bit more as well. So, um, like you said, maybe get a bit more board movement with, with Ralphie coming off on balls and stuff like that. Let's see what Coach Richards does coming well, that, out of the timeout. And, and the high pick and roll is where Ralph's been really good because he, he's getting opportunities. Um, it's just when they seem to be moving the ball around, it's, it's great they want to try and move the ball, but nothing's fallen. It's a lot of, ju a lot of jump shots, like you said, for Ipswich. Young gets a deep catch, was looking for Coleman, cutting to the basket. It goes out of bounds off of Logan. I think when Logan are in that 2-3 as well, rather than oh, having Harvey oh, sit on the 45, they need him being one of the guys, short corner or high post, being damaging from there, rather yeah. than having Marty Leahy and James Corn, who aren't really you know, as big a threat as, as James Harvey. That's Kyle Harvey, sorry, James Harvey. We know who you meant. Leahy, nice hey. pass inside, Quan there you fouled. Go. I more like it. Good job from Lay, attacking, finding Quan under the rim. 39-33 the lead here. Logan's up six with James Quan at the free throw line for Ipswich for two shots. Quan like hits that. the first. I like that look from Luke though, going into a 2-3, mixing up a little bit. Obviously digging in a bit more in the paint. I think they might look to maybe extend the pressure a little bit as well, but uh, I like the different looks for Logan. Ralph tips it, it comes up with a steal for Harvey. Defense. Harvey turnaround jump shots, good. And Ipswich also coming out with a bit of a trap here, forcing a little trouble for Logan. Amar inside for Young. Carroll uses a nice fake, gets it back to Mitch Young, spins left, he's double teamed. There's six on the shot clock, Carroll kicks it to Amar in the corner, three is up, and good for Tommy Amar. Name, name, name me a better scorer in this league than Harvey. It's hard, man, it's a tough one. He is just so versatile. Tipped out of bounds off of Coleman, so it's gonna stay with Ipswich. Got ex about three minutes left in this first half. Logan's up five. What is it about, you, know, you, you talk about his versatility. Well, he, gets you, he can get you, he can play off his back. He can do what he just did then, which was, you know, high post flash, just patient little reverse pivot, jump shot, shoot the tray. It's his body type that allows him to do that stuff yeah. as well. Like, he's just super versatile. And we've seen over the years in the QBL, versatile athletic bodies like that are the ones that, you know, really dominate this league. Yeah. Another turnover for the Thunder. That's their, their fifth turnover. 
which is which isn't too bad, but they uh, they just lost their way a little bit. So good timeout. Hey, yeah, Coach Gang going to take a timeout. We'll take one as well. We've got about 2:45 left in the first half. It's a three-point lead for Logan on Ipswich in your QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media. Back with you out of that timeout from head coach Luke Can, 42 39, the lead for Logan. Seeing Kane Bishop for the first time tonight for Ipswich. Also seeing Simon Teller for the first time tonight for Logan Thunder. Spears likes the matchup, goes to the rim, lays it in, plus the foul. Good take there from Josh Spears. I think that's something I spoke about in my game to my girls as well. Like when people would take three or four dribbles DD, surely there's a little bit more help yeah. know, coming than just playing one on one, especially, you know, getting towards that charge circle. It's gonna be hard for anyone to guard that. Yeah. And and you know, Spears he's got great length at I don't know, I'm gonna s I think he's about six six. Um, and again he's got he's such a legit three point shooter that you've got to give him that Great take from Simmons, misses, and then gets the follow to fall. Well, the, the, the force are asking for a travel, and I kind of agree. Um, it looked like he lost the ball and came back down with it. I think the referees give him that because they didn't blow the whistle on the contact on the shot attempt. Three-pointer from Spears is off. I could be wrong. I've definitely been wrong plenty of times in my life before. A Cedar fires the wing three that hits the bottom of the net. If you're Ipswich, you've got to play Ray to be a scorer, right? Rather than coming off, you know, guys like Cedar and Tommy and playing on well, him, think, like, making him a scorer. Yeah, I think that was just a miscommunication. I had some subs come in, and I just don't think they sorted out who they had. Harvey, another tough bucket. Carroll skips it out to Cedar, who's feeling it. Takes a dribble, fires again off the front of the rim. Bishop skips it. Ralph's open. Wing three is up. Well off. It's tipped out. To back to Spears. Now Harvey. Working against Simmons. Spins. Floats. Can't hit. Simon Tell with the rebound. Well, as much as I give Harvey some love, that was a bad shot. I get I get a bit of heat check action, but equally, you've got to involve guys, right? For for the for the force. No one else has shot the ball more than four times already, uh, other than Harvey. So again, they just got to involve. They just got to involve other guys. The deep catch there for Young to lay it in. The last, I think, five possessions, Johnny Ipswich's trans D has been pretty horrible. Yeah. You know, if you're not going after the boards, you got to be all the way back. You can't be in that mid area and just let someone like Mitch Young beat you down the floor. Reach in foul called on Simon Taylor. It's only the third team foul on Logan. With about 24 seconds left. And the music festival stops. <laughs> yeah. Where were we the other day? Well, the Spartans was bloody loud. Uh, don't get me started, boys. It was, it was Do North not Gold get Coast, me started. It? it was our game in North Gold Coast. Actually, all, all yeah. every, every can, we get, can we get a memo to all clubs? It, this is not a nightclub. Some of us, some of us like the hoops, and we want to watch the game. At least here we got people here, so it's a bit. Yeah. Of a... <laughs> I'll be biased. Spears finds Ralph in the corner. Three is off again. Follow for Spears is blocked. Somehow Spears. Yeah, oh, Young covered, but he lost it out of bounds. I think Young got a piece of it. 
So Logan has it with 13 seconds to play. Coach Ken gonna take a timeout. Let's keep it here though, gents. 51-44, Logan's gone on quite a bit of a run here to push it out to seven. I like the timeout from Coach Ken. You have it, you might as well use it, and you give yourself a good opportunity to get a good look with about 10 seconds to go in the half. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, for him, it's obviously important to try and get some momentum in a game where, you know, very similar to the women's game, where it's, a, where it's an arm wrestle. If you can try and get a bit of momentum, a bit of fist pumping for the boys as you head into the sheds, it's always a good, good thing. So see how they execute. What do you expect to see out of Logan on this p possession? Young has been pretty good when they get it to him in the post. They haven't really gone to him exclusively, though. You gotta think it's gonna be a young touch, maybe maybe a mixed seater or a Coleman, maybe. Well, I think there'll be three three people involved. I think it'll be Ray, something with Ray, Cedar, and, and Mitch involved, maybe you know, into a dribble handoff with Mitch diving or something. I think he's looked better when he's setting on ball and dived to that post rather than slowing down. So I expect something like that, but uh, it looks like Ipswich are kinda um, you know, lessen the pressure a bit, so it'd be interesting to see if Logan can get through it. Yeah, you gotta expect that Ipswich to come out with a bit of full court pressure here. They, that has troubled Logan a bit a few times when they've gone to the full yeah, court press. I, I, and I'd like to see them do a little more of that as the season progresses, because, you know, I like a lot of the depth that, that Ipswich has. You know, they have they, athletes too, don't they? Yeah, they, they got guys, you know, guys that could play 15 to 20 minutes a night, you know, in Spears and Bishop and Godinay, um, etc. So. Kobe Robinson in for the first time tonight, bringing that defensive pressure. Here comes Coleman, dumps it inside for Young, who's fouled by yes, Kane Robinson Bishop. They're gonna have a chat, they're gonna see if it's unsportsmanlike. Logan was calling for it. Stop it. That is not unsportsmanlike. It's a foul. Give him the two shots. <laughs> Oh, oh there goes on. the unsportsmanlike on Kane Bishop. <laughs> Chris Richards doesn't like it. Kane Bishop certainly doesn't like it either. It's like I said to one ref last week. They said he, he did make a play on the ball. He hit his hand. And I said, what's in his hand? Right. So it's the same there. Of course Just it because is. he's holding on a little bit longer. Right. Mitch is a strong guy. He wants to prevent the M1. He's not doing anything excessive or anything. It's tough, you know, with... When we talked to Regan about it, he says, you know, that's part of the rules and, you know, they have to call it. But I think <coughs> I think referees need to really make sure that you don't have to <laughs> you don't have to go right down the line on the on the on the on the rule book. I don't think. But they're making a play on the ball, so unless it's excessive contact right. to the or, point or, where it's dangerous, or, isn't that still a yeah? Or in the bet? head, right? You, you yeah. know, silly stuff. Okay, cool, no worries. <coughs> but you know, that's a good foul exactly what I demand of anyone playing for me. <laughs> That's a good foul. You're also from the old school, Dave, when they used to tackle each other on layups, so. Well, not, not, yeah, not on layups, but, but again, on everything. Was, but there was never intent to hurt a dude, right? No. And Kane definitely, there was no intention. Absolutely. Yeah, and on the other side, if he allows the M1 and doesn't hold on a little bit longer, his coach is going to be angry as well. Right. <laughs> so. Still have an opportunity for a good look here. Carroll fires it three and hit the front of the rim. That's no good, and that's going to end the half. It was a pretty close game until those last few minutes of the second quarter. But heading into the break, it's a nine-point lead for Logan, 53-44. And, gents, it was a very, very good half of action for both teams. Want to get your quick thoughts, Dave, on the first half of action. I think for the force, um, you know, they just need to do something to involve others instead of just the Harvey uh, offense. I mean, don't get me wrong, obviously he's a terrific scorer, but it's not going to be sustainable come third or fourth quarter if they can't get involve others. And uh, Braden for Logan, I think they're doing a pretty good job. We, you know, we talked about Ipswich and needing to find someone else to score, but Logan's really shared the load quite well in that first half. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's all in the defensive end, like I spoke about in the, at the start for Logan. I think, as I spoke about during that time out, they've done a lot, lot better job in that last five minutes of sort of digging in on Harvey and playing off other people and making them take shots. And then I think they've able to push the ball as well because Ipswich's transition day has been pretty poor and... But they've, they've got a lot more ball movement going into Mitch Young and stuff, and I think that's worked for them. So if they keep doing that, um, you know, it's going to be it's going to be tough for Ipswich in the second half, I think. Well, it is the halftime, so we'll take a break. It's 53-44. Logan's up on Ipswich 
New QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media, Australian Sports Network, Stream Team Australia, and of course, our major sponsor, the Illum Group.
Welcome back to the QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media. We're getting set for the start of the third quarter. Dave, really good first half of action. Logan kind of pulled away towards the end of that second quarter, though. Let's take a quick look at some of the statistics at the half. Yeah, Cedar's got seven, Amar eight, Young 14, Simmons seven, and Coleman 10, and uh, Carroll and Jeffries three and four points off the bench respectively for the four surprise no surprise we as we talked about harvey's been on fire 20 points ralph's got six points three assists just uh joshy spears three palane two marty lay two and kwan's got seven so uh again just for the force and it's it's always a challenge too as we talked with chris richie's before the game you know the first time he's really got the group together so you know it's it's difficult to say obviously we, we, we talk about engaging everyone and getting them on ball but they haven't really played much together either so that's the challenge that they're gonna they've got to come up with but i don't do excuses so they just got to knuckle down get some stops and move forward they did a better job of of the, controlling the pace in my opinion um johnny only allowing tw logan to have 23 in that in that uh, second quarter i know 23 sounds like a lot but the pace that Logan tries to play with, that's pretty good, considering they had 31, I think, in the first quarter. Yeah, so what do you think the team, the Ipswich needs to do to get themselves back into it? It's a big third quarter here for them. Yeah, it is a big third quarter. And, uh, I mean, realistically, they, they, they just got to get some stops. Logan, th Thunder's shooting the ball pretty well, just under 48%. Um, and, and Ipswich isn't too far behind them. It's just that, uh, you know, a couple of extra turnovers. And again, Logan's been uh, getting to the foul line for a few a few extra free throws. Got to thank uh, Logan Thunder women's head coach, Brayden Hasselhurst, for joining us at that first half of action. As you see, they find Young rolling to the rim. He misses. Harvey grabs the rebound, then Amar fouls him. Yeah, good set to involve Young. I like that. You know, and you got to love that. Just good, good execution. And he just missed a nice, simple one, but that's what you're after. Immediately, Coach Ken going to the bench already. Jeffrey's getting set to check in. Poulain fires that jump shot and hits. I wonder, I wonder who he's uh, pull, pulling off after that. Was, did, did Amar, is Amar in foul trouble? Tommy's got three now. Yeah, okay. Simmons goes inside for Young. Working one-on-one -on -one against Poulain. Skip pass out to Cedar. Drives baseline, left-handed layup, no good. Harvey grabs the rebound. That's been a great battle so far tonight, Harvey and Mick Cedar. Yeah, absolutely has, Johnny. Here's Marty Leahy going inside. Harvey, jump shot is wet. Pretty good start to the third for Ipswich. Yeah, well, the easiest way to, have, to build continuity with a group is just plenty of talk defensively. You know, really getting aggressively out on that split line, talking it up, hitting the box, hitting the rebound hard. Good smothering defense. Simmons dumps it off. Yeah. Again, three seconds good, in the key. Really good defensive set for the force. A lot of talking, a lot of switching. Good recovery, good closeout. Tommy Amar does get that breather. Jeffries checks in for him. It's always a tough one, that one. I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I, I probably, 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 probably would have left him in, maybe to just. Tommy's had a pretty good half. Yeah. Spear steps through, misses the shot. They're gonna say it was on the floor, so no shot attempt for Spears. And I know you, Dave. You, you coached. That under 20s group with Josh Spears and Jason Ralph. Yeah. Uh, you know, quite a few years ago now with Joe Kalu, but what were those guys like at, at the 20s and, and where have you seen them progress from there? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, that, I mean, they were terrific. You know, we got a silver medal that year and um, really probably one of the, the best groups we've been involved with around uh, just really buying into the system and. Um, you know, great. They're both great team guys. Do anything for the team. 
Harvey splutters off, tipped up and in by Poulain. Really like what I'm seeing here, Johnny, in this third quarter from the force. He's done a really good job. Ipswich has ripped off Gee, a few straight here to cut the deficit to three. Boy, and, and again, it's uh, offensively, uh, Johnny, it's, that, that doesn't... It's actually defensive that I've been really impressed with. They've just knuckled down. We have to uh, welcome into the commentary booth for the first time in 2019 our, the third member of the Real Big Three, Dan George. Dan, thanks for getting back to us. We missed you, brother. I know, I've missed you too. We had a great run for a few years, and obviously I haven't been on the mic so far this year, but you guys have been doing an awesome job covering what is an excellent league again, and the quality of the competition just gets better and better. So another good game tonight, so it's great to spend a little bit of time with you. Oh, it's great to have you back, Dan. What have you seen in that first half of action from both teams? What's really stood out to you? Uh, well, I think they're both pretty evenly matched. I, I think if there was no scoreboard in the building, you'd have a hard time believing Logan were up. It was my gut feeling just watching it. I think well, I, my impression was Ipswich were able to get in the lane as they wanted to. Logan were kind of just interchange and they're really setting good picks on offense but did a great job obviously to get scores when they needed them but it looked like Ipswich was more in control but you look up and Ipswich is down so it's um credit to Logan for finding a way to just grit it out and and um and stay competitive even while they're not playing their best so sets it up for a pretty good second half here three seconds on the shot clock for Logan pass nearly stolen Spears lost it out of bounds so there's one second on the shot clock you got to think this one's going at the rim. Coach Ken wants an explanation from the referees why the shot clock never reset in the first place. There's the turnover from Logan. So, I mean, if, if it was in the women's game, who would have got thrown out for that kind of <laughs> uh, questioning thunder? Braden, Braden got a uh, technical in the women's game. I think he looked at the ref the wrong way. It was, a little, it was a little harsh, let's just say. Well, how good is it that you're commentating women's basketball, Double D? Sorry, mate? I said, how good is it that you're commentating women's basketball? <laughs> yeah, you're I finally, mean, finally oh, respecting oh, where the real athletes are at. All over the women's basketball in 2019, mate. It's hopefully, been good. Hopefully Corinne Derwin's not listening to, uh, while, we're, while we're commentating. But no. it's Till, been great. Sh sh listening. Tilly's we've, locked in, mate. She's locked into the ballet. I'm sorry. We've had some awesome women's game. That women's game from the before the Logan Ipswich game was one of the better games we've seen so far, men or women, Dave, in 2019. That yeah, was a great game, and uh, Ipswich doing a great job. How about Kyle Harvey hitting the tough turnaround plus the foul? Then, then we said it a lot in the first half, but. Harvey is, un he's almost unstoppable, really. He can do it everywhere. He sure can, and we saw him knock down the three ball. We saw him take it off the dribble. He was posting guys up, hitting fadeaways, put back offensive rebounds. He did a little bit of everything. And I think it's a credit as a player, but also it's pretty hard to stick around for four or five years in Australia if you're not a really good guy as well. Yeah. So he's obviously a good dude. They love him in Ipswich, and he's performing at a high level. Simmons is open for three. He fires and drains. It's a big bucket. That's the first bucket of the half yeah. for Logan. Leahy left his feet, nearly got himself in trouble. Ralph's little floater goes in and out. Harvey nearly killed that I mean, one. This dude, this dude, has he got a cape on tonight? Like, he's had a couple offensive rebounds too where he's just been really bouncy. Jeffries from the corner off the side of the rim. Harvey and great Nick. Mitch Boulain can't handle the pass. I have, uh, I always have flashbacks when we were at when we were at uh, Ipswich, and uh, what's his name, Rob, Rob. <laughs> hey, Rob Manson. Rob Manson picked up. Uh, how quick hey. was that? We were talking about it last week. Hey, let me tell you a story, everybody. <laughs> so I had a work meeting yesterday in Kenmore, and I walk out of my meeting, and there's this big dude pushing a stroller with a baby in it. I'm like, yeah, that's a big dude. I don't see big dudes like me in Kenmore. And the dude turns around, he's like, hey, Dan. I go, oh, my God, it's Rob Manson. Last time I saw you, you had fluoro pink shoes on failing out in six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a, obviously a good dude, extra long super cat, so there's instant respect 
but um, I had a Rob Manson flashback. That was Friday at like 5.30 Friday afternoon. <laughs> Yesterday. We, we had a flashback last week because, man, that was the fastest foul out ever. We only credited him with the 5,000 in five minutes. So I think it was six. six. Uh, okay, right on. Might have been. All right, guys, timeout taken on the floor. We're going to take one as well. Logan's up by five, 58-53. Your QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media and Australian Sports Network. Back with you off of that timeout, 58-53. Pretty good timeout there by Coach Riches. Um, just try and resettle the guys after a good start. They kind of slacked off a little bit. Yeah, it was an interesting one, Johnny. Uh, an interesting one, Johnny, because it's a 9-4 run for the force. So it was an interesting timeout, unless he just wanted to have a little bit of a breather for, a, for some of his main guys. But defensively, I really like how they're scrambling and moving at the moment. Just really good energy for the force in this third quarter. Coleman's been pretty active as well, pretty bouncy. We're still waiting for him to uncork a hammer for us, but see if we get one. We saw that we had that one from Mitch Young in the first. He has, but, uh, you know, again, always, you know, the, the new imports to the league takes a little bit of time to settle in. But he certainly has a nice looking stroke. It's that left hand, I think, Dave. We always say the lefty, lefties always look a little smoother on the shot, yeah, don't they? Yeah, and he's hit, uh, he's hit, he's one of three from three. So it'd just be interesting to see how Coach Can integrates him. Nice take. Oh. oh. A lot of action at the rim. Nothing can fall, though, for Ipswich. And here comes Logan. Simmons picks up his dribble. Now he gets it back. Good bounce pass for Coleman. A lot of contact. He lost it on the way up. Then there's a foul. Let's see who they give this one to. It's going to go against Ryan Jeffries. I think that's the fifth team foul. So it should be a couple shots for Ipswich. Is it, is it a new entertainment system here, brother, or what? It because is. It's very loud. Because it's super loud. It's <laughs> and I don't think it came with an off switch. I've been non-stop music since the second the first tip went, but yeah, that's all right. It's good music, at least for the most part. Hey, Can't complain the, about the, it. The, the, the DJ is terrific. Don't, he is good. Don't, don't get me wrong, right? I have Shazam, three of the songs he's played. Like, <laughs> they are quality. Yeah. yeah. Put, put him in the, the party playlist? Yeah. Yeah, let's say yes. Put him on my gym playlist. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'll, I'll do like a little bit of squeaky court time and play a communicate. You know yes. what I mean? Just, it's not a nightclub. That's all. I I'm thought you were going to say you like a bit of hip hop in your playlist. No, I do like yeah. that. Yeah, but yeah, that's, that's he, he's I good actually value. like hearing squeakers, on, squeakers on the floor. Yeah, it's otherwise great. known as sneakers. But um, like <laughs> the, the players calling plays, it's good to hear that communication. And especially, I think we've seen Ipswich in the zone the last few possessions. And Logan play this great up-tempo flow offense. So it would be great to hear what they're saying to each other because that zone has given them problems. Yeah. Marty Leahy now at the line for a couple shots. And they're in the bonus here for the next four and a half minutes. I mean, if you are Ipswich, this is, this is exactly what you wanted coming out for the third quarter. Leahy hits them both. Zach Young going to check in for Brian Coleman.
Here's a 1 2 2 again yeah, from Lo Ipswich. Lo Logan is 1 of 7. Oh. Here's so Harvey far. forcing the steal. Going right at Simmons to lay it up and in. Tom Harvey, two points. Yeah, 1 of 7, uh, boys, for Logan. Start this third. Good pass. Young throws it up for his brother, Zach, who lays it in. That's that young to young Can we, 62 57. Can you, can you normally get a sub in that situation? Like, we stopped the game I don't for a think sub. You could. Yeah, I know. I think they called a goal 10, maybe. Oh, okay. So it was a dead ball. Okay. And that's why he got the sub in. Yeah, I just. Even though Zach Young finished through that yeah, goal okay. 10, but I think they called it anyway. I, well, so loud I didn't hear a whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Leahy with two on the shot clock hits the front of the rim. Simon Taylor scraps for the rebound. Here comes Rayshon Simmons. Comes off the young screen, reverses it to Carroll. Now Young on the baseline. Dumps it off for Zach Young, who's blocked by Poulain. Here comes Kyle Harvey. Met at the rim and fouled. That one was on Rayshon Simmons. Oh, they're going to give it to Carroll on the body. Two shots for Kyle Harvey. That's a tough matchup for Sean Carroll. Trying to guard Kyle Harvey in transition. Yeah, it sure is. Well, and he didn't do a, he didn't do a whole lot wrong. I mean, I think um, again in those circumstances, the offensive players creating all the action. I thought Carroll did a pretty good job of staying straight up. Ferguson and Poulain check out. James Kwan checks in. As does Alec Godinay. Harvey again. It's amazing that we've got a three-point game with just under four minutes left and we have one player in double figures for Ipswich. Yeah. Harvey's been phenomenal. Uh, the, thing that, the thing that just impresses you even more is the fact that every team knows that Harvey's <laughs> going to get a lot of looks and yeah. be aggressive to score, yet he's still averaging nearly 30 a game. Well, I think... Just watching tonight's game as well, I think this kind of up-tempo, free-flowing transition game really suits that because it's pretty hard to get your defense set against him. Whereas if they wanted to slow it down and play half-court basketball, that allows the defense to lock in on someone like that. So if it's playing up-tempo, get the ball out in trans, it really helps them, which is great, gets Harvey looks. But I think some of these other guys, Jason, Ralph, um, Martin that we've seen, 43 on the yeah, camera yeah. over here, yeah. I think those guys suit more structured half-court offense. So the challenge is making sure those guys get touches and feel part of it while also allowing the up-tempo game that gives Harvey the room to operate. Because you can't slow it down and play half-court basketball because you just double-team Harvey every time. But there's a balance between playing up and down and getting really quick and getting him looks and getting these other guys involved too. And that's why we've got Harvey on 29 points and the next highest scorer is on seven. Well, uh, we got we got bullets... Ex-Bullets coach Mickey D on the call on the uh, stream, and he, he agrees <laughs> that uh, it's pretty loud out there. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Mick Downer, tuning yeah. in all the way from New Zealand, having a great season out in the New Zealand NBL. As Leahy lays it in, 63-61, Ipswich hanging around. Now Young has it double teamed. Finds Carroll, baseline three is good. Dan, did you ever play against Sean Carroll in the Siebel days? I sure did. I was actually just talking to Holly, um, Sean's sister-in-law during the first half. And we were saying it's, um, it's about nine years since my last game against him in the Siebel, which would have been Geelong Knox back in the day. And he was always a solid player. CJ Messinger, Lester Strong, they were both amazing imports. And he was always solid, but I don't think too many people would have backed him, given his um, athleticism, to be still a really good player 10 years later. So the fact that he is, I know he's had a 30-point game this season for Logan. Still a very, very important part of what they're trying to do. Um, it just shows how high his basketball IQ is that he's still able to do that. So, yes, I have played against him a number of times. And I mean, it's awesome to see him still out here doing his thing in 2019. 
What, what was his game like nine years ago? Is well, it still exactly the same as it is now? now yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, you could, you could um, watch a video from Knox in 2007, watch a video of Logan in 2019, same thing. Smart, get through offense, um, feed your studs like Mick Young and knock down open shots It's and play really good defense. It's, it's almost identical. And I guess he never had to learn to adjust his game to losing his athleticism as he got older because he never really had much athleticism to start with, so it was an easy transition to age but he's still very effective as you're seeing and i i harvey takes it off the rim i i, I still think and it's not a knock against anybody but i think logan looks best when he's on the floor as ralph drains the top of the key three big three big three for ralph gives the force a little bit of a sniff as we head into the third to that point, Johnny, I don't think, and we've discussed this in previous years, I don't think Mitch Young's the kind of guy to demand the ball as much as we would love him to. So Sean Carroll's smart enough to make sure that those guys get looks. He makes sure Mitch Young gets shots. How about Quan finishing plus the foul? Ties the game at 66 and has an opportunity to give Logan a lead with the free throw. The minute 46 left in this one. Well, in the third, I should say, sorry. Yeah, and Coach Can looks a little nervous. Well, this has been Logan's M.O. They just haven't been able to put consistent basketball together yet in 2019. Yeah. You know, you, we talked about it with Braden earlier. These guys are, you know, as talented a group as you'll find. They just haven't really been able to bring it all together for a, a really solid performance just yet as Ipswich does take the lead on Quan's free throw. Yeah, Ipswich is Ipswich is a plus 10 in this in this quarter. Jeffries from the free throw line. Good old Jeffries. Home. Does what he does, gives them a bucket when they need it. He's been doing that for a while too. He sure has and that's that's what we talked about. You know, he, he certainly boost bolstered this uh, Logan bench. Ferguson wants it. Gunde gets it to him finally against Taylor. There's the double team. Ferguson looked like he took about 45 steps. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how they got a foul on Simon Johnny, Taylor on that one. You beat me. You beat me to it. I wasn't gonna go 45. I was gonna. I was gonna have a dance move or something. But he sure looked like he was doing a whole lot of moving down there. What? Foul called on Simon Taylor. Logan in the penalty, so Jaden Ferguson will go to the free throw line for a couple shots. I think the Logan bench agreed with us. That was crazy. As your boy Rashid says, ball don't lie. Yeah. I was sure Dan, Dan George was going to be wearing a Raptors hat coming into the game tonight. <laughs> Why would you have thought that? I know, I know you're, a big, you're a big Toronto fan, aren't you? Me? Yeah. I'm not a Toronto <laughs> fan or a Golden State <laughs> fan, but what an amazing series. But um, well, Sean a cheer for the underdog and how awesome for the city of Toronto. Man, I, like every basketball fan, you see all these guys get hurt. Oh, yeah. Man, those Warriors showed how much heart they've got. Like, Clay Thompson te tears an ACL, runs back onto the court, hits two foul shots, then runs back on defense. Yeah. Like, he's and, crazy. And, and was still dirty that he took got That's to right. Like, he's... He's a psychopath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like he's in the best way possible. But amazing athletes, obviously. I, you see a lot of talk about how the medical staff shouldn't let these guys play and this, this, and that. The reality is, guys, those guys have played. Oh, uh, yeah. A lot of hoops. 800 games of basketball yeah. in the last five or six well, years. Something silly like that. And yeah. it'll be interesting to see if they have some, some com real conversations around the reduction of the games. But. Again, money talks, right? So the owners, the owners want the revenue of the home games, and so I, I would find it very surprising if they ever reduced the amount of games in the, in the regular season. Well, and, and TV money is a right. big part of that. Yeah. If you cut back the number of games on TV by 15, 20 percent, it's going to have a massive impact on dollars. And, so and, and interesting, if the players are happy to take a pay cut, they could. Yeah, right. Rather than I, I was going to say, are no the players, are the players willing no. to, to give up the cash? You can still pay me the same for playing 60 games on 82. Yeah, no, that's not going to happen. No. Young banks went home. The other side of it too is I think we're going to see more and more people playing like Kawhi did, resting 
regularly through the season to be ready for the playoffs. Yeah, well, most of the main dudes will play 60 games a year. That's what we've yeah. seen. That's what's going to happen. 20 seconds left in this one. Logan up by one. They can hold for the final shot of the third. Let's see what they got. Good trap there by Spears. Yeah, that's really well defended by yeah. Switch. Simmons has to fire a three. It's short off the front of the rim. Good show. Oh, Bucket. Good show from Spears on the on the screen, and then a good closeout from Robinson on the shooter. A yeah, really solid quarter there for Ipswich. They come from down nine to up one, and a bit of momentum. I think that's a really nice defensive stand for them to end the quarter on. Yeah, I think they did a really good job defensively. And, uh, and again, offensively still, they, they got a little bit of stuff to work out. Uh, you know, to, to Dan's point, they, they need someone else to score other than Harvey. Uh, but defensively, I really like how they, they hung around, they rotated well, they communicated well, and then they finished it off with good rebounding as well. Or well, Harvey could have 42, 43 points and they'll get a win as well. So yeah. the other thing, they have to make sure they keep playing up-tempo, let their defense feed that, but if they get stuck in the half court, you've got to execute because Logan's going to come home strong at home with the quality of roster they've got. Well, let's see what these guys have. It is the third, the end of the third. We're heading into the fourth. The QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media. Welcome back to Cornubia Park Sports Complex. Another tight one here, 70-69, Logan up on Ipswich by one point. Setting up for another exciting finish between these two associations. Ferguson fires a deep one, that's off. Coleman grabs the rebound. Yeah, some interesting signs there, Johnny, in that third quarter. Um, Logan, 6 of 15, they ended up. It's a foul, yeah. And um, uh, ex for, for the Thunder, four turnovers, I certainly think contributed, and that was um, attributed to their great defense that the Force had, and they won the rebounds 13-7 too. So a really, really positive quarter for the, for the Force. And uh, got them back in the game. Now the key is, is can they stay there, especially with the starters, Tommy Amar, Cedar coming back in for Logan. Cedar goes one of two. It's a two-point lead for Logan. Things are getting a little chippy out there between the squads. That's uh, his fourth personal foul for Brian Coleman. The substitution is being made. That was Coleman's fourth. Simon Brian Taylor Brian also Brian has four for Logan. Oh, one in a bit of foul trouble well, for it, it which is Ralph with was, three. It was just a bit silly too because Spearsy wasn't doing anything and uh, Coleman just wanted to push and shove a little bit, but now it's taking himself out of the game. And, Probably taking himself out of the game Defense. for the next five or six minutes. Defense. Defense. Spears gets inside, fadeaway jumper is good. We're tied at 71. Simmons crossing over, skips it to Cedar. Machanda now back out to Mick Cedar. Deep three is up and good for Mick Cedar. I want to see a Cedar show here. Yeah, that was wet. That sure was. 
Juan, pull up jumper, short. Cedar has it for Logan. I'm pretty Skips confident it. they can get that anytime. The Quan one on one ISO jump shot. So obviously Ralph and uh, and Harvey come back in here to give him a little bit more offensive stability. Kobe Robinson gets a breather. So does Ferguson. Eight forty left in this one. Three-point game. Logan up 74-71. Simmons gets the screen from Young. Leaves his feet, finds Cedar. Wing three is up. That's good as well. Back to back threes for Mick Cedar. Pushes the lead out to six. Uh, you asked for it, Johnny. Cedar delivered. I'll give you a tip who's going to get the next Logan shot when we come down this way. Foul inside. That's a Mars fourth. If it's going to go Tommy. against. Yep. Yeah, Tommy Amar, his fourth. Juan gets a breather. Cedar active hands nearly came up with a steal. Poulain goes to the left hand and puts it in. <laughs> Simmons gets right to the rack to lay it in. Simmons has been terrific tonight. Again, the knock on him is, is, is his three ball, but he's hit a couple, and just his penetration has been really good. Blaine again going left. He's blocked Good this shot. time by Young. Logan here. comes up with it. Simmons finds Cedar. Uh -oh. He's going to step into uh -oh. a three. That one's a little too strong. And there's a foul Cedar on the floor. Machando rising up for the rebound gets fouled by Poulain. A lot of dribbling here Defense. from Ipswich. They're five on the shot Defense. clock. Spears looking to make Defense. something happen. Florida rattles in. Good take there by Spears. Well, a much needed bucket to Logan on a run. And we spoke earlier about Ipswich in the half court. Maybe not the strongest way to score, but Spears with a great move to bail him out and keep him within striking distance here. It's a clear reach and foul from Ipswich. Third team foul for Ipswich. Good, and I thought it gave him some pretty good energy when he came in. Yeah, he was really good. I think, um, you know, probably surprised he's not playing a little more. I think he's been good for them over the last couple of years and good, good fundamental guy. Gives him a little punch. Pretty athletic guy, too. We've seen him put down some ha a few thunder dunks. Yeah, a little sneaky. He's a little sneaky athletic. Yeah. It was interesting. You saw him when he was on the floor. We saw him guard Mitch Young, Rayshon oh, Simmons, yeah. Mick Cedar. He yeah. does have that versatility. Yeah. Big few mi well, big couple of minutes here for me for Ipswich. Either they can get, get, get it back to a close game. Or, or I think Logan's just going to sort of run over the top of him. Cedar blocked by Harvey. They're going to say it went out of bounds off of Logan. Fellas, do you think Ipswich has enough points in them to get a win? Well, that, that's my well, concern. 75 I think haven't, 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 other than Spears' lap, Defense. haven't scored for a while. Yeah. Defense. 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 I mean, 
mean, Ralph working the baseline. Gets it out to Spears with eight. Then a lot of contact, a little pushing and shoving, a lot of talking. I'm sure there was a technical called in there somewhere. Let's see what they're doing here. Technical foul called against Kyle Harvey and another technical foul called against Rayshon Simmons. Bit of bumping and grinding in the paint there. Getting to, getting a little physical. Well, Harvey's yeah, there a pretty are, there cool. There's nothing wrong with a little bump and grind with that, Johnny, so that's okay. And I think that intensity is good to see, but... Harvey's a pretty cool cat, so I'm assuming something went on there that... Uh, he looks confused. He was yeah. kind of looking back at, at Logan's group, asking what the heck was going on, but... Um, hopefully that doesn't fire him up too much to come back strong here with some buckets. He tried to answer, but... Simmons fouled on his way to the basket. So he's going to go to the line for a couple shots. Well, I'll, I'll be honest. I'd love to see an angry Harvey cut sick here in this last six minutes. He needs to get angry. Yeah. If he doesn't get 40, they're not going to win. Yeah. And I think that's on him to just demand it and take over, but... They also have to work hard to get him good looks, set picks, get him open. Yeah, the last he can't work last super hard for every shot. Get three him some or four possessions, they've really struggled. I'm sure we can get him a, a post up or a clean jump shot. That's what they need to try and do: set good picks, so he doesn't have to work so hard for every layup or every shot that he gets. And as you say, we said it in the women's game too. Just you know, simplify it sometimes. Give the guy the ball in the block, let him go to work, and see how Logan adjusts. One, two, eight. Harvey wants it in the block. Working against Machando, gets it out on the wing now. And back down on Machando, gets inside. A lot of contact, there's a foul call. Foul Touch can is teetering on the edge of uh, technical as well. Wanted a foul call on a screen inside. Four team fouls on Logan now. Referee Jason Haig checking the clock, I think. Yes, it is. Baseline ball. So it'll be baseline out of bounds. Coach Ken not happy. He's going to take a timeout. Looking to ca calm the troops. I don't think he was happy with Tommy Amar on that one. But uh, we'll take a timeout as well with about 5.45 left in this one. A eight point lead for Logan, 83.75 over Ipswich. The QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media. Back with you here at Cornubia Park Sports Complex, 83-75. 5.46 left in this one. I do like the contrast styles in coaching of Chris Ritchie's the Ipswich Force. Coach pretty reserved, pretty relaxed. And uh, Luke Can, he certainly rides every possession. Harvey fouled on his way to the basket. And that's five fouls for Tommy Martin. Yeah, he's and done, yeah. 
Coach Cairn rolled the dice and left him out there with four. And well, Coleman and the dice did not roll his way. Coleman's coming in and he's got four as well. Tommy going to take a seat for the rest of the night. Had a pretty good game offensively. Did a good job while he was out there in his minutes. And Coleman on four as well. Both teams now in the penalty. Can be seeing a lot of free throws, fellas, the rest of the we, way. We will. But you got to get yet again. You got to give Logan Thunder credit. They're they're hanging around. They're staying in front. Harvey hits them both. It's a six-point lead for Logan. 83-77. Harvey's got a bit of blood on his chin, so he's got to get subbed out. Alec Gunday is going to have to check in. This is big here for Harvey and Ipswich because they need him on the floor if they want to win this one, fellas. This is going to be the quickest <laughs> tape job in history. We could see Mummy Harvey come back out here in a second. Look at him. Yeah. Oh, no. I've... Six on the clock. Cedar has it. Good hesitation dribble. Fires the three. Oh. That's good from Mick Cedar. Big three. Big nine three. points to lead for Logan. Pushes the Thunder lead to nine. Poulain again. There's the entry to Poulain. Guarded by Coleman. Goes right at him. Spins left. Layup too strong, tipped out by Coleman. Machando kicks ahead well, for Cedar. Blaine's just got to, he's got to go harder. He, he has to recognize Coleman has four. So he's literally going to yeah. do nothing but put his hands up. So well, create contact, finish. I guess to his credit, three years ago or two years ago, they never would have run an ice over him on true. the block. So yeah. good on him for developing his game. But he does the exact same move every time. Two dribbles, middle, spin to the baseline yeah. for a layup. Just couldn't get it to go that time. Great pass from Boulain to Marty Leahy to lay it in. Ipswich is hanging around here, fellas. I don't think Kyle Harvey is going to be changing his uh, Facebook profile to this photo tonight once you see him get back out on the court, gents. Unless he hits a game winner. Yeah. <laughs> Simmons under pressure, has to oh flick gosh. a pass out. Spears comes up with the steal. He kicks it ahead for Ralph, finds a trailing Poulain to put it up oh. and in, plus the foul. Luke Kent cannot believe it, but Poulain finishes plus the foul. It looks like a foul from here, Arden. And uh, when you complain about every call at some stage, you're not going to get the calls that were fouls. Like, that looked like a foul to me. Yeah. And great, great finish from Polain. And, and good find from Ralph in transition. And I've got nothing but love for the attempt if he's the physio or manager <laughs> or whatever. It's the no. worst patch up job no, no, I've no. ever seen no, in, my no, life. Dave, <laughs> in my life. You don't need to sugarcoat it. <laughs> That's brutal. Well, isn't it a brutal patch? Can we get some rubber gloves on while you're doing it at least? Like, <laughs> There are certain uh, codes you got to meet here. But uh, I'm having flashbacks to um, Andrew Gaze 20 years ago. Coleman misses Young with a big offensive rebound. Under four minutes to go in this one. It's a five-point game. Simmons inside. Young is fouled by Josh Spears. So Young will go to the free throw line for a couple shots. Harvey hates that bandage right now. Look at him. I think he would do anything that he could to get rid of that thing. Young hits the first. Second one's up. That's good as well. Couple big free throws there for Young. Push the lead back out to seven. Yeah, they, they just can't settle in trading baskets. Defense. 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 Blaine recovers and puts it in. 
Love it. He Stay loves with that it. spin move, doesn't he? He yeah. spins to the left hand every single time he shoots it. But I'd love to see them just set better quality picks. It's almost like they just exchange. Yeah. They get nothing out of it if such an offense. Find a man, set a good quality pick, and help these guys get open good looks. Equally, I, I, I want to see him go back to maybe some of the things that were successful in that second quarter was just a high ISO pick and roll too, where Ralph was coming off, getting feet in the paint. I got, I got shooters. I got Harvey shooter, Lay shooter, Spears shooter. I agree, Dave. And further to that, the thing that was working in the first half was their defense. They'd get stops and they'd run, and Harvey in transition was unguardable. They're not getting stops. Logan scoring all the going to the foul line. There's no transition offense for Ipswich at all yeah. anymore. Young doing work on the glass, gets fouled on the putback, so he'll go to the line for a couple shots. Yeah, Young's been really big for them the last couple of minutes. Just that physical presence. He had a good post up against Spears and then hit the glass hard. Just about three minutes to go in this one. Five-point game. It kind of has a similar feeling to the women's game before this one, Dave. Kind of tied, you know. Yeah, yeah. Feel like one team pretty ugly-ish, scrappy, and but uh, you know, plenty of time on the clock for both groups. Well, Kyle Harvey was 12 of 19 at three-quarter time. He's now 12 of 20. Yeah. We have three to play. I know he's had a couple of foul shots, but one field goal attempt is just simply not enough in a quarter of basketball. Ralph's open for three, he fires, it's an air ball. Well, it just was a nothing offensive set, right? I mean, I don't mind post-up spears right there, that's, that's fine, but it just, you know, you can't spend seven seconds doing nothing. There was no cutters, no flashing, no exchanging on that, on that weak side. Good hesitation by Simmons, he can't finish, but he's fouled. He'll go to the line for a couple shots. You gotta give Logan a bit of credit though for that day, Dave and Dan. You have to, absolutely. They're denying Harvey every time. They're double teaming him when he does catch. They're not even letting him catch. So, really good adjustments made uh, to defend Harvey. Yeah, but at the same time, if, if they're so focused on that, you, you can easily get him open on some nice back picks. Um, Simmons hits the first one. Simmons has 15 points, five rebounds, 11 dimes, and three turnovers. I think as true a point guard as you'll find in the QBL. He's done a lot of work against Harvey here in the second half also. Defensively, I should say. Here is the matchup. Leahy has it. Working against Cedar, blocked by Young. And, and I, and I want to give Logan credit, but offensively, Ipswich have been really bad. Like, the have last been. few minutes, they just have been really yeah. bad. Cedar drains a three. Another big one from Mick Cedar, leads out to 11. And there's a timeout taken by Coach Richards. Let's keep it here, gents, because I got to say, it kind of feels like this one might be over pretty soon. 11 points, a minute 50 left. It's now or never for Ipswich. Well, they just look a little confused for me. They, they don't know what to do. Harvey, you know, to Dan's point, he's had one shot, I think, is what the math tells me in that fourth quarter. Um, and then he just obviously looked to get the ball, and then he gave it away anyway. So. Um, you know, they just got to clean that up. And, and again, if they lose the game tonight, they'll probably be pretty annoyed because it was a game they easily should have won. Or sorry, you know, we're right there with an opportunity to win. That offensive execution in the fourth has really been tough. And it's hard because their main offense that everyone knows, it, it, goes, it has to run through Harvey. But you would think at some point that they would be able to make those adjustments because well, this is not something that we're talking about just in 2019, no, yeah, guys. But I think in the first half, you get stopped here in transition. That suits Kyle Harvey. But you have to expect in all games, especially on the road, the fourth quarter is going to slow down. It becomes a half-court game. So that means you've got to be able to execute and get Kyle Harvey the looks you want him to get. So they're letting Logan's uh, defense rather dictate what shots they get rather than if they're saying, we're going to run this set for Kyle Harvey. And if they double-team... Ralph, Spears, 
Marty Lee, these other guys have to be ready to knock down shots. If yeah. they don't knock them down, we'll live with it. Yeah. But and they're, they're not executing they're not executing half court offense at no. all. And they're all capable shooters, that's why I said even, the, even that pick and roll action's nice because spread the floor and give them shooting opportunities. Well, Ralph has it now with five on the shot clock. Gets inside, kicks it out, Leahy three is up. And like good. That's good offense. I mean, that's just, good offense. just like we said. Yeah, out of a timeout, credit Coach Richie's out of a timeout. That's what we're saying. Good quality half court offense. Good active hands there from Marty Lee. He tips it out of bounds. Well, the force, the force, uh, they're right there, but Seed has been tough in this second half. Hit four threes. Logan, happy to work some clock here. They're up by eight, a minute 20 left. Cedars floaters well off. Goes out of bounds, it's gonna be Ipswich ball. Gotta get a couple quick ones here if you're Ipswich. Harvey spinning, firing, short. Big rebound there from Mick Cedar. Young flips it up and in. 10 points to the lead for Logan. One minute left in this one. Ralph skips it over to Harvey. He's gonna fire at top of the key three. That's good for Kyle Harvey. Here comes the trap. Coleman gets it over to Carroll. Logan looking to run this one out. Carroll in the corner, three is up. And that's gonna seal the deal. Pushing the lead back out to nine. With about 30 seconds left. Harvey over to Poulaine. Skips it to Leahy. And it rolls out of bounds. Just kind of felt like Ipswich never was able to really get over the hump. And then Logan, got to give credit to Logan also, though, because they really kept their composure when things weren't going so great. They got some tough buckets from Mick Cedar and Mitch Young. And I think they made the defensive adjustments to make it hard for Ipswich to get, all, get, this, get the offense rolling. Yeah, I, I agree. And again, I'm not, I'm not taking away from the Thunder defense. I think they certainly competed well, but it's a lot easier to do when, uh, for me, Ipswich didn't know what they wanted to run, and so that's always pretty easy to, to, <laughs> to defend when there's just confusion and hesitation for me. So, you know, if, if for the force, I know they're, that's going to put them at two and six, I think, um, and they'll be disappointed, but they were right, they were right here for the whole game. And uh, just got to have a look at some cleaning up some of that stuff on how they're going to try and get buckets when they really need a bucket. And for the Thunder, I think it's a good, you know, obviously a terrific win. And Mitch Young, we all know he's a very, very good QBL player. But that's a very quiet 26 points he's dropped in tonight. Yeah. Like, he's been effective as he always is. Didn't realize he had 26 on the night. Blaine blocked himself at the rim. That's going to be it. Logan going to kick ahead for Coleman. He goes right at the rim. He's fouled. It's been a long time since I've seen a player look as frustrated and disinterested as Coleman looks right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's a frustrated man. I, I hope for his sake he, he finds his place in the team and very talented player, but looks a little bit um, frustrated with where he's meant to be at the moment. Well, it's been a tough night. He hasn't been able to really get on track. He had a bit of foul trouble, but... Let's take a look at the um, statistics, really, because it was that it was that kind of well-balanced attack for Logan that did it. It wasn't really one player. You look, they've got five players in double figures. Four of the starters hit double digits. Yeah, Cedar, Cedar was really good. 20 points, five of nine, three from three. Tommy Amar obviously fouled out. Eight points. Mitch Young, 26 and 10. Simmons had 16, 12, and uh, and six with 12 assists. Simmons, the assist leader for the for the tournament or for the competition, and uh, you know Coleman, 12 and nine. So I mean I think you know it's pretty good punch from Coleman, as I said he was in foul trouble, 
And then I thought Carol and Jeffries were nice off the bench as well. So this is why, to your comment earlier about Sean Carroll, there's four seconds left, they're up 12, and he's um, telling his teammates who to mark. Leah Lofi just subs in, and he's coaching him like it's a one-point game. Yeah. Just locked in to the end. That speaks to why he's been so good for so long. Absolutely. And it's a good win to get Logan back on track. Where do you see the where do you see these two teams in the QBL competition at this point, Dave? Well I just I just think the competition the uh, the the I just think the competition so tough that at this at this point of the season you can still string together five or five or six wins and you're right there. So and equally too when, when it's an eight, eight team final format, you just got to sneak in a number eight and you're a chance. So I think for Logan, obviously they're a talented group. They've added some bench um, in Ryan Jeffries, which is which is a good addition for them. And Coleman's a bit different to o OB Shea as well. So I think Logan on paper have a chance. I think they need to clean up some of their consistency, that's for sure. And, and for Ipswich, again, I really like some of the pieces they have. Um, and, you know, for, for Dan's benefit this is the first time they've had a full team so you know if they can get some guys healthy clean up some stuff offensively you know I really like the Ipswich group as well are you surprised at how much they play through Mitch Pullane I mean he's been really really good and I'm not knocking him but when you have guys like Spears and Ralph and to me tonight when they look the best is when Ralph is coming off that high screen and roll getting his feet in the paint and I just feel like when you enter it in the post you kind of take that away from Ralphie. I think we have to watch a few games because they might have said, Mitch Young's a beast, let's go at him. So we're going to get Pauline extra looks tonight to get him in foul trouble or whatever. So that might not be a steady diet week yeah. in, week out. Well, that's going to do it here as Logan pulls out the 13-point win, 102-89. It was not that big of a gap between these two teams. I don't think the score does the does the game justice because Ipswich really fought to the end there, fellas. I, I'm, I'm still trying to hear. Sorry, Johnny. <laughs> uh, it's all good. We, I know we went through the statistics for Logan. Let's go through the final stats for Ipswich, gents, if we can. Yeah, so Ralph, Ralph had nine uh, points, eight assists. Harvey finished with 34 and 11. And 11. Spears, seven. Pelaine, 10. Marty Lay, 13. And Jason Quan had 11. So uh, where are we at next week, Johnny? When we take a look at the schedule for next week, we will be with you at live at Flower next Sunday as the Brisbane Capitals host the Gladstone Port City Power. That game will be live on the Basketball Queensland YouTube channel at 1 p.m. It's going to wrap things up for us. Thunder, I just got to say thank you. It's so good to see you. Great. Glad awesome that you made back it back. Thank we you. missed you a lot. I got to thank Dave Derwin for putting in work on two games, doing a great job as always. Got to thank Chris Sieber on the camera work. Also got to thank James Bowman and the Australian Sports Network for their technical support and their graphic support as always. And also I want to thank Logan Thunder women's head coach Brayton Hesselhurst for joining us for the first half of commentary. And I want to thank you guys all for tuning in to another presentation of the Basketball Queensland QBL Game of the Week presented to you by Nothing But Net Media.